Hi, this is Matt Wimmer from Brody Precision, and welcome back to another episode of Certificates in Niagara. In this episode, we'll be looking at signing a certificate with a third-party certificate authority. And in order to do that, we have a couple requirements. As we talked about before, uh, a certificate authority signing your certificate requires uh, your certificate to be attached to um, a domain name and not an IP address. So that means that your station has to be accessible via that domain name. Otherwise, the certificate is useless. And in order for your uh, certificate authority to verify that you have control of that domain name, you also are going to need access to that domain name's DNS settings. And we'll, we'll show what that um, means and what that's used for uh, here in a little bit. And then obviously we'll also need to purchase an SSL certificate from a third party certificate authority. Um, that could be anyone. There's a, there's a whole host of places where you can get them. Um, in this case, we'll be using GoDaddy and this is the link uh, specifically to getting uh, certificate authority or SSL certificates from uh, GoDaddy. So this is the full procedure for um, signing a certificate with a third party certificate authority. Um, it's here for your reference later on. We're going to go through the process step by step um, and refer to this a couple times. Alright, so we've popped out of PowerPoint now and uh, before we go in and make our certificate, I just want to show you why we want to do this. So right now, I have a station running on my local machine, and I've set up the DNS so that this sslDemo.bpedata.com points to my station. This is out live on the uh, internet. I'm going to take it down before this video goes up, so you won't be able to see anything there. But um, right now, it's live up on the internet. So when I pull up that domain name, you can see that I get the typical error message that everyone's used to seeing with Niagara when you don't have a certificate that's signed. Um, this certificate is self-signed. It's the default one that's that comes with Niagara. And, and we want to change that. We want to make our own certificate, and we want to get it signed. So let's pop in now to Niagara. And we're going to log into the platform of the device that we want to get the certificate for. So if this is a JACE, we'll log into the platform of the JACE. If this is a supervisor, we'll log into the platform of the supervisor. In my case, it's just a supervisor. So we'll log in there, and then we're going to go to the certificate manager. This Tritium certificate is that default one that we were using that uh, is throwing the error because it's not uh, validated for uh, the domain name that we're using or assigned for the domain name that we're using. So we're going to create a new one. And we're going to go through this whole list of uh, options that Niagara is uh, asking us to fill out for this certificate. And we'll start up here at the top. And then our alias. This is going to be just basically a name for our reference, what we want to call it. So I'm just going to call this SSL demo. And then we have our common name. The common name is going to be the address that we're going to access this uh, device from. And it's basically the... Uh, address that we're going to confirm that we have control over and what the certificate is going to be valid for. So in our case, we had this over here in the browser, right? This is the address we want to use, sslDemo.bpedata.com. So I'll come back over here and we'll go, we'll make this SSL, SSL demo.bpedata.com. And organizational unit, we don't really really need to worry about. Our organization, we'll just call Brie Precision. Don't need to worry about these guys. We'll say US. And I'm only signing this certificate for one year, so we can leave the not before and not after at their defaults. Uh, an important thing to note is that as of September 1st, 2020, um, there's a change that's being made uh, in just about every browser, Chrome, uh, Safari, and Firefox have all uh, said they're doing this. And because of that, all the certificate issuers are doing it as well. You can no longer get a certificate for any longer signed, one specific certificate signed for any longer than one year. So after that year's up, you have to go out and re-sign the certificate, then reissue it, and re-import it into your station. 
um, or your device that you want to use it on. So we're going to leave this at the default at one year, and we're going to leave the key size and the certificate usage at its defaults as well. Um, alternate server name, we're not going to use it, uh, but you could if you wanted to. If you wanted to um, make this certificate valid for other domain names, you could put those in here. Um, and I'm going to put in my email address. And then hit OK. And then give this a second or two to create the certificate. Because I'm doing this um, on my local machine, it's done pretty quickly. It might take a little bit longer um, if you're doing this on a JACE. So you can see now that we have this SSL demo uh, certificate here located in our user key store. And now that that's been created, it's not signed. It's 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 literally just a self-signed certificate. Um, we want to get it signed by a third party uh, now. So we're going to do a certificate request down here. Um, and then we're going to hit OK. That's going to generate that certificate request for us. And then you can see by default it's going to throw the CSR, our certificate signing request, in the cert management folder of the uh, install of Niagara that we're using in our, our user home. So because I'm using a webs version of Workbench, it's going to throw it underneath the version that I'm using, webs, and then certificate management. So we'll hit save. So that's done. So now um, I'm going to pop open Windows Explorer here real quick, and then we will go down to find that. Oops. All right, so if you drill down in our folder structure, uh, we can get to that certificate management and then see our CSR that we just generated. Now, I know that GoDaddy, when you go to create a certificate, needs to, um, or it wants to see that certificate requ signing request um, just as like a copy-paste, not as a file. So I'm just going to open this up in uh, VS Code, which is Visual Studio Code. It's just a text editor uh, code program. Uh, it's free, so uh, and it's really nice to use, actually. Um, so I'm just going to copy this out of here and then I'm gonna go over to GoDaddy and I'm creating this from a renewal of a certificate your process is gonna basically look identical to this um, if you're creating a new certificate from scratch so you can uh, manually enter the primary domain name here in the first step of the process um, or you can input a CSR and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna input the CSR so we're going to delete all of this old stuff, and then we're going to paste in our new one. And then you can see it's decoded this uh, certificate signing request, and it knows that we want to use it for sslDemo.ppedata.com. So we'll hit Continue, and it's going to do some stuff here in the background. Um, and then it's going to ask us how we want to prove that we own the domain name. So we have a couple options. We can use uh, an email address, uh, and these are basically the, the standard email addresses for somebody who has like control over a domain name, or you can make a change to uh, the website that is at that domain name, or add a text record to the DNS, and that's actually the way we're going to do it. Um, it probably would be easier to do it uh, via email, but I don't have any email on this. Um, domain name and the text record is kind of like a easy generic way to do this you could very quickly uh, buy up a domain name and and add this piece on uh, very easily so we'll hit continue and then it asks you for the uh, issuer that you want for your certificate we can just leave that as the default of uh, GoDaddy SHA2 we'll agree to the conditions and we'll hit continue all right, so now you can see um, we've completed everything that we need to complete here, but we're pending verification. So we need to verify that we, we own or we control this domain name. All right, so we've waited a little bit of time now, and at the top of the GoDaddy page, it's now telling us that we need to update our DNS in order to verify that we have control over this domain name. 
So in order to do that, it's telling us that we need to add a txt DNS record with uh, this specific value to our site's DNS. So I'm going to copy that value. And then I'm going to head over to the DNS settings for that domain name. So basically what DNS is doing, uh, very simple uh, terms because it can do a lot more than this. Um, but for our use case, all we're doing is we're taking our domain name. Uh, I guess we want actually this guy, SSL demo. And we're creating an A record, which basically that means um, that we're taking this domain name and we're going to forward any traffic that goes to it to a specific IP address. And in my case, that's the IP address of my uh, network here. So, and that's the external IP address, I should note as well. Um, so that's what an A record is, and that's what's happening behind the scenes that makes this SSL demo data.com work in the browser. So in order to verify that I own this domain name, we're going to create a record. And Amazon has all this other fancy stuff we don't care about. We just want to do simple routing. And we're going to define a simple record. And we're going to leave this at default, the blank. And we're going to change this A record to be a text record. We'll change this because we want to set a value. And then we're going to paste in that code that they gave us. Hit define and hit create. Now, depending on the DNS provider that you use, that process might be a little bit different. Um, but that's what you want to do is you want to make a, a text record um, for the root of the domain name that has the specific value that you were given. So we can see now that we've got this bpedata.com record that's a text record, and it has our value that we just set that GoDaddy told us to use. So now if we go back over to GoDaddy and do a check, you can see they verified our domain name, and it's going to take five or ten minutes for them to uh, create our certificate for us. So we will let them do that, and we'll be right back. All right, we gave GoDaddy some time to do its thing, and we now have an issued certificate. You can see under the status here, we have certificate issued. We have the ability to revoke the certificate if we needed to, um, and we can renew it down the line uh, when we need to. The important part for us is over here on the right, download certificate. Um, from this drop-down, it gives you a bunch of options for common uh, web server types. We don't apply for any of those, so we're going to choose other, and then we're going to hit download zip file. Again, this, this process might be a little bit different if you're using someone other than GoDaddy, but it'll general, generally be the same. Uh, you're going to get a certificate, you're going to get a zip file with a couple things in it, um, and that's going to be what you need to uh, import it into Niagara. So uh, we get this zip file. I'm going to extract it out. And you can see it comes with uh, a bunch of files, not just one certificate. Uh, these top two are the certificates that we need um, for what we're doing. Um, this is our, these are our server certificates. And then this bottom one is a bundle of certificates uh, that GoDaddy uses in its chain of trust for who signed us. So I'm going to open this PEM file in the CRT file in uh, VS Code here. You can use any text editor. Um, they'll, they'll all be fine. Just close down some other things here. And you can see this certificate uh, with the code is our server certificate. It's just a single certificate inside it. And then, oops, looks like I deleted close down the wrong window. Let's do this again. Oops. Open with code. Okay. And we have our bundle open here and it has three certificates in it. So what we need to do is put all of these into a single file that we can import into Niagara. So what I'm going to do is take this whole chain, do a copy, Go over to our server certificate, paste them at the bottom. Now remember, the the order of these certificates matters. So we want our server certificate at the top, then any intermediate certificates, and then finally uh, end on our root certificate. So uh, we've got them all combined into a single file. 
I'm going to save this as um, a different name. I'm just going to call it like uh, combined. And now we've got that file that we need for Niagara. So now we come back into Niagara and we do an import and we're going to find that combined file which is on my D drive and then temp and this combined file will hit open. It's going to basically read the file, see what's inside it, uh, read it out for you if you want to see what's going on. Uh, you can see who signed it, you can see our, uh, our subject which is us. Um, you can see our common name that we're using uh, and different key technicality things. We'll hit OK. And that's it. You can see now we've got a check, box, a check mark next to our uh, name here in the certificate. And if I open up my station, uh, the important part is now I can go into the... Oops... I can go down here to my web service and I can change the certificate that's used for the web service to the demo certificate. Hit save. And then if we come back over to our application director, we should see that it restarted the uh, web server, which is good. Now I'm going to go back to the browser and we're going to try reopening this, um, this domain name. As you can see before, didn't work connection wasn't private because it didn't like the common name that was used in the certificate because the certificate was self-signed. We refresh and now we have our SSL demo .ppe data .com. loads up fine. No more exception screen comes up and you can see we've got the padlock there verifying that our certificate is good. If we click on that, open up our certificate and we can see that we have our valid certificate and it's issued to our domain name that we talked about, and it was issued by GoDaddy. So that is how you do a third-party signed certificate, and hope you check in again next week for our next video. Thanks.